Within most database views, you can group items by a specified property. So for example, you might group a tasks database by its status property. And this segments the view into sort of subviews or groups. And there's one group for each unique value of that grouping property. So for those tasks, you'd have a group for planned, in progress and completed tasks and each group is tucked into a toggle which you can expand to see that filtered sub view that displays only the items that that toggle represents. So as you can imagine database grouping offers a variety of benefits. It allows you to enhance the aesthetics of a view and the segmentation makes the information in your view more digestible and comprehensible particularly when you're working with a pretty expansive database and you can summarize the properties of each group's items to reveal new and useful insights and then for many property types you can drag items from one group to another and that's going to automatically update the value of that grouping property. So in this lesson, we'll explore how to configure groups and then look at a few practical examples that utilize various database formats. So you can apply grouping to any database format other than calendars. And to do so, you'll click the database's three dotted menu where you'll find a grouping option. And when you choose that option, you have the ability to specify the property to use for the database grouping. So you can choose any property type other than roll-up properties. And depending on the type of property that you select, Notion may present additional configuration options. So with formulas that return a string, for example, you can choose to display only the first letter of the return string or the full return string. And with numbers, you can specify a range from which to include items within your database view. And you can also specify increments for your automatically created groups. And then with date properties, you can automatically group by days, months, years, and so forth. So for our tasks here, we're going to group by the status property, which is a select property in which case we have no additional configuration options when choosing the property. But within that grouping menu, within our three dotted menu, we do have some additional configuration options. So here we have the ability to hide all groups that contain empty values. And when you apply grouping to a database, it's going to automatically create a group for items that have no value within the grouping property. So by toggling hide empty groups, it'll hide that group as well as any other groups that contain no values within it. And then you can selectively display and hide groups within this menu as well. And depending on the property type, once again, you may have some additional options. You may be able to specify how your groups are sorted among other options. And then each group is going to have its own three dotted menu where you can choose to hide the group, adjust its color, and depending on the property type you may have some other options. And so in terms of the properties that you display within your groups, you can typically hide the property that represents the grouping property. So in the case of our tasks, we've hidden the status property because we know that each task within this assigned group, for example, is of the status assigned. And so it would be redundant to keep that property visible. And then next to each group's three dotted menu is a number. And initially that number is going to represent the count of items within each group, but you can change what it represents as a summary of the items within the group. So if you click it, you'll see a variety of calculations that that number can perform. And if you hover over any calculation, you can choose the property to calculate. So in the case of our tasks here, We'll choose the min option and we'll choose the days remaining property. So this tasks database has a days remaining property where it displays the days remaining until the tasks deadline. So when we choose the minimum 
days remaining, it's going to show the minimum number of days until the next task is due. And then each sort of sub view is going to retain the summarizing capabilities of its database format. So with tables, we know that at the bottom of any property, we can perform calculations. So for each sub view or sort of sub table within these toggles, we can summarize a property. So for example, if we want to display our priority property, we can do that and then we can average the priorities of the tasks within each group. And that setting is going to apply to each of these groups or sort of sub views. So the board format works a little bit differently. All boards group their items. These items are grouped into columns according to a property that you specify. So in order to add the optional toggle style of grouping, it's known in the case of boards as a subgroup. So within the board's three-dotted menu, the group option is going to refer to the traditional column grouping, and then you can add a subgroup. So for our people here, in addition to grouping by their experience level, we'll add a subgroup for grouping them by their employer, which in this case is called their organization. And in this case, the organization property is a relation property that relates to an organization's database. So after choosing that property, we have the option to sort alphabetically, manually, or reverse alphabetically. And then of course, we still have the option to hide empty groups. So you can see here that we have a toggle for each company within which we see the employees of that company. And within those toggles, the employees are grouped by their experience level, which is the primary grouping setting for the board. So let's look at a couple of additional examples that demonstrate the versatility and the utility of grouping. So for this people database, we can add another view and we'll call it gallery by organization. And we'll choose the gallery format. And this is going to display our people as a gallery. So for each person, let's use the headshot property as the card preview. And we'll display each person's email address as well. And then of course, we always want to apply a sorting rule. So we'll just sort each person by their last name. So we have a gallery of people nicely displayed with their headshots and we can segment these people by their employer by applying grouping. So within the three dotted menu, we'll choose group and we'll choose that organization property. And that's going to segment our gallery into the companies that employ these people, at which point we may want to hide our no organization group because it contains no values. And this creates a really nice directory of people segmented by their employers. And then expenses are always useful for demonstrating database concepts. So let's see how we can group these expenses in various helpful contexts. You can see that each expense has a date property, a category, a merchant, and a total. And we'll create a grouping view that utilizes each of these properties. So let's start with the merchant. We'll add a view and we'll just call it merchants and we'll keep it as a table. And so in that view, we will sort it by date. And then we're going to choose the merchant property as our grouping property. And after doing so, we can sort the groups alphabetically, which is the default, and we can hide empty groups. So if we revisit our view, you can see that we have a group for each merchant and within each merchant, we have the expenses associated with it. Now, because we're grouping by merchant, we can hide the merchant property within the subviews because we know that each expense applies to the merchant of its toggle. So I'm going to re-display that property and duplicate this merchant's view. And for this view, we are going to group by category. So we'll call it categories. 
and we'll keep the table format and we'll change the grouping property from merchant to category. And then retoggle the hide empty groups option. And in this case, we can hide the category property within the tables because we know that each expense applies to the category of its toggle. And then once again, we will duplicate this view. And in this case, we'll create a group for each month. So we'll call it months and we will reconfigure our grouping option to group by the date property. Now, when we do this, Notion gives us additional options. We can choose what time frame to create these groups automatically. In this case, we want to group by month. So we'll choose month. And once again, we will hide empty groups and we'll keep the chronological sorting, which is the default. And you can see here that Notion has automatically created a group for each month of expenses. And in this case, we want to keep the date property visible because each expense can have a unique date within the month. The month doesn't necessarily represent the precise date of the expense. And then lastly, we can create a view for price ranges. So we'll duplicate our month's view and we'll rename the duplicate price ranges, keep our table format, and then go into our grouping settings and choose the total property. And when we do that, because it's a number property, we can specify a range from which to draw the expenses to display. In this case, we want to display all of our expenses, which go up to just under $10,000. So we'll just add a zero to the default end of the range. And then we want to group by every $100. So we'll keep the 100 setting here and then we'll go into hide the empty groups because any of those ranges that contain no expenses, we want to remove. And in this case, we will change the sorting from ascending to descending. So our higher price ranges are towards the top. And then you can see that Notion has created a group for each 100 increment within which you can see the associated expenses. And in this case, once again, we'll keep that total property visible because each expense within a group can have a unique price. And then for each of these views, we can use the summary options to display the total expenses within each group. So we can see the sum of all expenses within each category, for example. And we can do the same for the monthly segmentation. And then lastly, for most grouping property types, select properties, for example, if you drag an item from one group to another, it's going to automatically update the value of that item within the grouping property. So we just adjusted that expense from a grocery expense to an entertainment and leisure expense, and it now appears within the entertainment and leisure group. So you can see how database grouping is helpful for segmenting our database items in ways that make them more comprehensible and reveal useful insights. And if you hit any snags as you experiment with database grouping, feel free to tweet at William Nutt.